Okay, so I wanted to make a quick video on gauge charts. Now, gauge charts are pretty complex to make in Tableau um, for a, such a simple chart. Um, and this video is not going to cover how to make them, okay? But it's going to be about how to how to copy them from another workbook into your own data source, and so creating them quickly, okay? But essentially, each gauge requires an aggregation, so some sort of um, calculation. In this case here, I've just put in 75%, and um, it requires all these all these parts of the chart need to be calculations, all right? So for each type of, yeah, for each gauge chart type, you need, um, for each aggregation that you want to put into a gauge chart, you need these um, seven calculations, all right? So um, let's try and copy this and um, put them into example without having to make these calculations and, and arrange it all, because you need to figure out these colors and stuff like that as well. All right, so we've got a brand new um, workbook here. And um, this, is, this is some example data, so it's just a bunch of student information about whether they passed or failed geography or history. Okay, so let's go back into the blank one and let's connect the data. Uh, yep, gauges example, yep. Let's use the fixed values, there they are. All right, one thing we've got to do is we've got to pivot these two columns and we'll call this um, subject and this one's going to be result. Okay, and so let's say we're interested in the, in the pass rate. Okay, so we need to create calculation, uh, pass rate. And that's going to be um, the sum uh, if uh, result equals pass. Oops. I must have hit enter there. That's okay. If result equals pass, then one end. So that's going to sum up all the passes and then divide it by the number of rows, which is the number of students. And we could do a count distinct of student ID if we wanted to, to be extra careful. All right, but we don't need to in this case. So we do that. Uh, let's just, before we chuck it in there, let's um, default property it to a percentage, which it is. And let's take a look. Yeah, so the overall pass rate is 51%. And we can see that um, split by gender, or we can see it split by subject. But let's say we just want to see this this aggregation in a in a metric in a um, gauge chart. So how do we do that? <clears throat> so we can go back to our gauge chart, and I'm going to copy over two. You'll see why in a second. So we go back to the empty one, and let's paste it in here. Cool. So it's it's come over, but it has also you'll notice brought its data source. So what we need to do is we need to recreate these calculations in the original data source and then swap the data sources, okay? So first of all, we're gonna need um, two folders just for organizationals. Gauge one and new folder, gauge two. So we're gonna copy these calculations, copy and then paste. And while we've got them selected, we can put them into gauge one. And while we're at it, let's just copy in gauge two as well. Folders, gauge two. Okay. So um, now this gauge is operating off this um, demo data source, and we need to swap it to our actual data source so that it can connect um, to the the columns and also our aggregation. We could do a blend if we wanted to as well. Um, that that could be easy. Um, it's yeah, that's a good point actually. Yeah, it depends if you really want to have a whole bunch of um, different data sources or not. Um, it would be tricky to bring in the the columns of gender or subject. I think, however. Um, yeah, okay. So what we need to do is we need to replace this data source with our actual data source. And because all the calculations are present in our actual data source, it has no problem. So it's, it's gone ahead and it's swapped over. And at the moment, it's still using just our, our manually put in um, value of 75%. So that means we no longer need um, 
that original uh, data source. And we can actually move this, the aggregation metric, we can swap that if we edit it. Instead of doing a hard coded one, we can put in pass rate. Oops. There we go. So now it should be, yeah, close to 51%. And if we want to as well, we can also chuck in, um, let's chuck in gauge one. Oh, we need to put it in the second one. We can put in the value uh, right there and just mark label and never show the top ones. And then, you know, we can just position this and just format it so that it's so that it's bigger. Oh, which one do we pick? Oh, it's always so confusing. <laughs> let's just do this one here. Yeah, cool. Um, so that, that allows us to see the overall. And because we're working with the same metric, we can duplicate this sheet and we can add in, you know, uh, gender if we wanted to. Uh, once again, we got to unhide all those. That's no big deal. Okay, and we can, you know, position position those um those labels as well if we want to. You know, we can see we can see that aggregation by any dimensions. So we could swap in a uh, subject as well. Oops, uh, take a picture. There we go. It's just annoying that we have to do these um hide those values each time, but you get the picture. All right, <clears throat> so I'm just going to delete that for now. But the key thing is, is that for a particular, a particular um, aggregation, we need all these calculations. All right, uh, we can show different things like we can split it, yeah, by different dimensions. But for the, that particular aggregation, we need a whole bunch of calculations. So if we want to do a separate um, aggregation, like for example, the rate of students who pass both subjects, we need to um, we need to make a second ag aggregation and connect it to this this calculated field. So I'll just show you how we're going to do that in one second. Okay, so um, we need to make an aggregation that is the um, the passing both subjects rate. All right, so we won't be able to split this by subject. Um, we will be able to split it by gender. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So um, first of all, we might make a pass, pass subject boolean, um, and that we can just use that. Um, let me just uh, do this little little trick here. Okay. So pass rate edit. Whoops. So I'm just going to make a, a calculated field by dragging this over here. And so it's just a, a Boolean because we want to use that, use that again. And the, the name of that calculated field is the, um, is the comment. So there we go. That's just a bit, a bit neater because we're going to need it. Okay. So we need to see how many subjects each, um, each student passed. So uh, students uh, total passes by student. So this has to be a, um, a fixed level of detail. So we'll go fixed by student ID and we'll go sum. Um, if we convert the Boolean to an integer, um, pass, yep. And is that correct? Yeah. So that number is going to be either one or two or zero. All right. So we can, we can save it like that, or we can just do the whole thing together. So we can go, um, student, student passed both subjects. So if that number is two, then it's, it's a Boolean and we've got it. Cool. So now we can do our final thing, which is um, rate of passing both. Okay. So we can go if um, student, student pass both subjects, then um, student ID. And so we can, if we count distinct this, 
and then divide that by the count distinct of all students, that will be the, the passing rate of both. So let's just take a quick look. That's about what I expected because the number is generated with a random split at 50%. So 50% times 50% is a quarter. Okay, so we've got that. So now we wanna, we wanna have that um, percentage inside our second chart. So we just hook it up like this. Uh, rate of passing both. There we go, 25%. Very cool, and we can see that by gender because that's possible to split this one by gender. So it seems that uh, the males are passing um, just purely by chance uh, more often than females. And we could once again add in the labels if we wanted to. All right, that's a quick video. Um, hope that makes things kind of clear. Catch you later.